what's happening everybody this is robert the leather cowboy muhammad right here premier leather crafters in the dirty dirty south as we call it down here at the bottom of the map you know we don't even classify florida as being southern because you got so many retirees so technically alabama georgia louisiana texas that's the bottom that's the dirty dirty giving y'all a little urban history lesson but anyway Welcome back, welcome back to part four, part four of our do-it-yourself um, sharing design from start to finish, how I do it from the drawing to the transferring to the tooling, which we're getting off into today is the tooling work of doing our sharing. There's been a lot of questions and ample questions over the period of time, you know, from crafter to crafter. Uh, about tooling Sheridan. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is when you're tooling Sheridan, there are certain things that you tool and there are certain things that you do not tool. And as if you watched the last video, part three, one of the key elements of Sheridan is to make sure that you have small tools, either small beveling tools or small backgrounding tools, whatever the case may be, depending on the size, the size of your artwork, you want to have small tools. That is a key thing and to share that. As opposed to a lot of the other tooling uh, techniques and designs out there, uh, which I covered over in another video, whether it's the Carlson City, the Versailles, or whether it's the, uh, I forget the name of the one that was in Oregon. But uh, those uh, particular designs, they have the same pictorials, but the backgrounding and the tooling work requires you to have larger tools, larger backgrounding tools, larger bevelers to cover the work because they want you to focus more on the background in the work, as my opinion. Now, as opposed to Sheridan, Sheridan Design wants you to focus on the artwork more than you do the background. And so you're dealing more with the artwork side of Sheridan as opposed to the other styles where you're doing a lot more backgrounding and beveling or, or background and work to, uh, uh, and it's not so much as the, uh, the artwork you focus on. If you, and if you guys do a lot of researching on that, you'll see in a lot of those other pictorials or a lot of those other designs, you'll see that that crafter, whoever was the, the ones that designed that or started that, it is a lot of background and work. A lot of background and work. But if you saw video number one, you guys know that I like the Versailles, or Versailles, which was started in Versailles, California by another saddle maker back in the 1800s. Here we go with the yawning again. But it was done back in the 1800s to where I particularly like that design. Uh, a lot more leaves involved. Uh, not as many floral pictures, uh, floral prints or designs or things like that. But the reason, another reason why I like it so much is that it is pretty much a forgotten about um, art form. Uh, there's only one company and that company is the Versailles Saddle Makers that's, that's still holding true today. But a lot of those designs have, uh, crafters have gotten away because everybody has jumped on to the Sheridan bandwagon. Nothing with Sheridan. Sheridan's a beautiful, beautiful art form and there's beautiful work that a lot of crafters are using with that. But it's so many people that have jumped over there on the Sheridan design and you have so many crafters out there that's doing it. I myself like to be set apart from the other ones uh, because I, I want, uh, going back into that old frame of mind back in the early 1800s, that's how you knew where uh, a, 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 a an old Western cowboy bought his saddle from was the way and the design of his saddle. You knew where it came from. And being that it was only four uh, of those particular major saddle companies back in those times, uh, even, and, and to be crazy about it, even Sears and Roebuck 
had a saddle or were making saddles back in the 1800s. And that's crazy. So even if I can find some old Sears and Roebuck designs, I would love to even do those because it's forgotten about forgotten about art form but anyway let's get off into this one we're into the tooling and the tool that i have selected is another tandy's tool and we're going to adjust the lights and uh adjust the camera but let me give you guys this uh tooling number uh, the number that i'm going to be using and it's the b802 b802 Great part about this little light, it comes with a magnifying glass so I don't have to use my glasses a lot of times. <laughs> but anywho, let's get the cracking. I'm gonna adjust this camera and we're going to start doing some tooling work. And uh, I actually started a little bit on this. Uh, started backgrounding. Now, myself, uh, and we'll I'll get off into the interior part of the tooling work to where I show you guys about using those small bevelers, but I'm using the B802, and I'm just going to bevel around the outsides of my scrolls and stems. Let me grab my smaller mallet, which uh, I would also encourage you guys to get various size mallets, especially if you're going to do the um, backgrounding work or tooling work with Sheridan, you will need something that's going to give you that right amount of weight as well as something that you'll be able to control as well. So let's get off into this and I'm going to have to case my leather one more time and which is going to give me a little bit more time to talk to you guys while this works itself in. Now, as you noticed in the last video, what I done was uh, we took our smooth beveler and beveled around the flowers. Now, you can also use a steep background and beveler, and this one has a matte finish. I guess you guys can see that. Let me move the light. Uh, this has a, a, a checkered matte finish, or that, that matte finish, as you can say. Uh, and uh, this is on a, uh, it's not as steep, but it is an angled uh, beveler. And uh, uh, you can use that around the flowers. There's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do. And let's get back to work. Now, what I love about this tool is by having that steep, uh, by having that angled head, it actually gets up into the lines of my carving work and it doesn't interfere or mat the artwork itself. And we're just gonna go all the way around this. Be careful on those edges. That's why the purpose of having some steep beveling tools or steep backgrounding tools come in handy. Let me move my light a little bit more. So I can see what I'm doing. And we're just gonna go right around this. And you're looking for that dark, darkened edge, which you can see here, that darkened edge, just like it was around the flower. I'm looking for that darkened edge. Now, I like using this matted checkered finish or that matted finish because it matches uh, very well with my um, small backgrounding tools that I'm going to use in the interior part of the flower there. And it makes it look very good. Now, uh, I'm also going to use a smooth beveler. Also going to use a smooth beveler. So you guys can see how I do the inside parts of my stems and scrolls. This is just to give you guys a little. And you want to get this tool as close to the cut as possibly can. That's where you really want to get it at. 
and then you can start sitting now even if i want to go around my flower i can go around my flower with this to background that f around the flower and that's just giving me a little bit more character to the artwork now this one here by the flowers being a little bit more round around the petals and stuff like that i would tell you to go to a different or a smaller background than this but it works great on doing these long lines um on the on the scrolls and stems now what do you do once you get to this point cowboy this is what we do well let me actually go in the inside of this and break that do that a little bit right there now here we go i'm going right back with my smooth beveler and this one is the craft tool b200 steep smooth beveler this is the one i told you that i modified a little bit and i'm going to come right down the back side of this stem with this one and you can go all the way in there because you're going to background that part two and this one i'm gonna Going to background that part two, and then I'm gonna come right back down the back side of this. Now, here's the thing: what you guys want to do, as far as in my opinion, the same way you tool is the same flow of your artwork. So, if you are, you don't want to. Because you want this to be stacked and raised. So when you're beveling, you have to think in terms of your next uh, stalk or your next stem is want to be raised this way and so forth. So you're stacking. That's why the purpose of this um, steep beveler comes in handy is because when you start to look at this, you'll see that this part of the stem is raised. So I want my next stem I'm going to skip over that one because it's already up. I'm going to skip over that one and go into this one. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm, I want the back side of my stem to be raised. Now, again, don't worry about those little marks. I'm going to show you how to smooth those out. And even in the inside of, now I'm going to come back. Since I'm using my matted uh, uh, beveler, I'm going to come back and mat that part there. Because I'm going to background the interior part of this. Because so just 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 gives me a starting point of where I want to be at, and I'm going to come right back, and we just walk in that tool back. Now here's my stem that's going into my flower, so I want to raise that up, so you can see that that stem real good on my. You have to remember what parts of your stem and your stalk that you want to be raised. And I'm going to come right down this one. I'm going to change um, change my beveling tools right quick and grab another one. Uh, where's my other rounded beveler? I have to find it quick because we're trying to work with time. We're working with time. We're working with time. Well, let me go ahead and just get my my um my background the tools. Now see, here we go again with the small background the tools. This is what I mean by the small background the tools. You have to get these things real small to go right and and I like using the pear head or the pear shaped uh backgrounders because they'll get into the V port, the Y part of your uh your Sheridan design like it's supposed to 
It'll get into that V shape very well. And then the rounded part will get right up in the cusp of that flower. Or right up in the curve of that flower. And either you can keep right on ro rocking and rolling. Again, we're going to run that right there next to that. Background that. And getting right up into this part of that, that Y. This is why you're doing your artwork will improve on that because you'll know exactly where to background and to. And this is all that we're doing is just accentuating all of those Y's and shapes and things. Now, to get those lines out, I'm gonna just take my modeling spoon, the big end, and I'm going right up the channel of that, the backside of that stem, and I'm just smoothing those, smoothing those lines out. So when you look at it, and you can actually do this with a lot. And if you use the edge part of your, your modeling spoon, it will cause those stems to separate a lot. And don't do it too much. You don't want to dig. You just want to smooth those lines out. And the same part that you tooled is what you want to smooth out. Now, there we go. So I want to accent my stem right there. And it's just rounding those port, rounding that part of that stalk off. So you don't see a lot of your tooling work. I guess you guys can see that. Let me move the light to where I took out a lot of those tool marks just by smoothing it with the backside of my modeling spoon. And that'll help you out too a lot, even if you have to go back and recase it. Recase it. And keep right on rocking and rolling. Just to smooth that out a little bit. And I'm just going right down the channel of my cut. Now, the great part, and let me enter, enter, throw this in too. The great part about using your modeling spoon too, with that little bit of extra separation between your cuts, when I when you get ready to antique this, the antique will go down into each one of these cuts. That's your your um uh, your your nice pair of Stacy Adams to a good suit. You know, the suit is fine or the artwork is fine, but that nice pair of shoes or the perfect gold watch will set off the set off the whole suit. The same thing with Sheridan. When you when you start to do your antiquing, that antique gel will go down into each one of these cuts and really make your artwork pop. That's the ticket right there. And we just want to go down in here. Like I said, now me myself, I, I run my bevel tools uh, to where my each one of my stems will be raised here, here, on the back side. I run mine on the back side, and here I run it on the back side, and it comes all the way up. It's the same way when you you have to remember the flow of your artwork. Now, once we get to this side. I'm gonna come here on the back side of that stem and here and here just a little bit because it's already raised. So I just want to make sure that my, and even in my flowers to where I did my beveling, spooning work or my beveling work, I wanna take out all of those two marks with my modeling spoon. And it just accents that just a little bit. There we go. And then if in your tight spots, you just flip that over and use your small end of your spoon. Now, if you're not proficient with your beveling tools to where you, you haven't gotten to the point to where you can bevel and do, don't leave those tooling marks, 
the modeling spoon comes in handy and this will fix a multitude of sins in leather work because it smooths out all of those tooling marks and a lot of times only to it, uh, another crafter can another crafter see where you start, that's the ticket, what's separate, what makes great tooling work, and you can tell inner beginner tooling work, is you can tell how hard they were hitting. And it just takes time and practice on how hard you want to hit your uh your art your your your, your tooling work. Sometimes it can be that the leather is cased too much. You can have too much water on there. And now I'm going to take my beveler and I'm going right back around my scroll, my bud, not my scroll, my bud right here. I'm smoothing that out and I'm going to come right back around this bud too. Now, can I take my modeling spoon and smooth that out? Yes, you can. And I'm just going to increase the depths of this one a little bit just to make it pop and stand out. I'm going to come back with my beveler because I really want that to be raised. And just and this is what I mean by just you can take your be 